January was a solid month for us, but February, not so much, especially with the lock of the night predictions. Last time around, we had Brandon Moreno at minus 250, closing closer to minus 300 come fight time. And he ended up coming up short against Brandon Royval, which now drops our lock of the night record for 2024 to 9 and 7 for minus 13.7 sorry, minus 13.92 units for a minus 17% ROI. Again, a far cry of the success that we had last year with the Lock of the Night predictions. But thankfully, we are only two months into the year. There's plenty of time to recover and get back into the, the black and then obviously into the green. But it's going to be a slow and steady process. There's no need to rush this type of thing. Chasing only makes it worse. So we're going to stay the course. And definitely these bounces will start to go back our way. And uh, hopefully these guys go out there and perform the way you expect them to perform and not get married to an overhand left or an overhand right the way that Moreno does and it didn't seem like he had much of a plan B outside of that so uh, unfortunate there Daniel Zellhuber probably should have ended up being the lock of the night prediction but is what it is you have to take some lumps along the way but we are going to try to reduce those as much as we can moving forward all right this weekend, UFC Vegas 87, this is a very chalky card. We have 8 of the 11 matchups that are currently confirmed and scheduled. 8 of those fighters are minus 300 or wider. So like I said, very chalk heavy card. So you have to be very careful in terms of which fighters are the actual landmines and which ones we can actually either parlay or play straight up with huge confidence and expect for them to go out there and hit. I got three lock of the night candidates for you guys for this weekend. The first of which is going to be in the form of Christian Leroy Duncan, who comes in at minus 300 as he takes on Claudio Hibero. Both guys are flashy fighters, but I think Duncan has a little bit more method to his madness, whereas Hibero is kind of just looking for the knockout, and he starts to slow down if he's unable to get that uh, to come to fruition. His lone win in the UFC thus far comes against Julius Holmes, uh, or Joseph Holmes, I believe it was. Julius Holmes is a Fury FC fighter, but Joseph Holmes, who was unable to secure takedowns, and that's when he mentally broke, allowing Hibero to get off on his own offense and eventually find the finish himself. On the flip side for Leroy Duncan, we're seeing some maturity from him, even after taking the first loss in his UFC career against Armin Petrosian a couple fights back. Last time around, we saw him take a slow and steady approach against Dennis Julian, and then eventually opened up a second round knockout opportunity for him that he took on home with him. In this matchup, I expect Duncan to be a little bit more cerebral, maybe use a little bit of that clinch and grinding grappling to try to wear on Hibero and then start to get off on his own strikes later on in this matchup, which has why at minus 300, <clears throat> not a bad lock of the night prediction uh, candidate uh, for this UFC Vegas 87 card. All right, let's move on to the next candidate that we have for you guys. It's another chalky one where we got Vitor Petrino coming in at minus 305 as he takes on Tyson Pedro. Now, Pedro is a guy that I've been notoriously pretty low on, and he has had some decent success since coming back from his extended layoff. He's now 3 and 1 with his last victory coming over Anton Tercali, but the guys that he's been beating are definitely not on Vitor Petrino's level. Petrino is a guy that I wasn't super high on coming into the UFC. I expected him to be a gas bag of sorts and a guy that would slow down significantly significantly later in fights. Um allowing his opponents to take over but he's shown that he can keep his explosivity and power uh, uh, about him late in fights and he's been able to get some late stoppages and even been able to go out there and win decisions as well this guy's very solid all around great power puncher but developing a very stellar ground game as well in this matchup I hope he sticks with the striking because I believe his speed power and explosivity is going to be too much for Pedro on the spot and I expect Petrino to win it pretty dominantly which is why he is the second lock of the night candidate the third and final lock of the night candidate i have for you guys is going to be in the main event with shamil gadziev coming in at minus 155 he's going up against jerzinho rosen strike and this is a binary striker versus grappler matchup but i think that gadziev is becoming a better fighter every time we see him out there now this is a guy that i actually faded last time around because i thought martin budai would be able to deal with the early onslaught stop some takedowns and get to his punching combinations and drowning Godzilla of late, but Godzilla was the one that ended up 
breaking Budaya with his own striking onslaught, walking him down, landing big strikes, and not really letting him off the hook, and eventually finishing him in the first minute of that second round. In this matchup, it would be better if Gadziev looked to take this to the ground, where I don't think Rosenstrike has anything to offer off of his back against somebody that's so aggressive from that top position. Look for Gadziev to go out there, maybe try to work the striking a little bit to get Rosen straight comfortable in the striking round so that he can eventually change levels, get this fight to the ground, and smash him from that top position. Give me Gadziev as the third and final lock of the night candidate. Which of those, these three did I end up going with as the official lock of the night prediction? Check the link in the description below for the lock of the night Patreon page where I've already posted it for those fine folks over there. You guys can check it out as well as the free parlay that I normally drop on Thursdays. I've already dropped it for the folks on the Patreon on Monday. So if you want access to that before the line starts getting a little bit worse, which I'm sure it will be considering how much chalk is on this card, you guys can check that out as well at the Lock of the Night Patreon page. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow for the top three Dog of the Night candidates. See you guys then. Peace.